Okay, so here's how you set up, at least partly set up, the good old Carter or Holly, uh, the Carter BBS one barrel or the Holly 1920 or 1945 or the, the various one barrel carburetors on the Slant 6 operate similar in, in principle. Uh, so this is a cold engine and on a cold engine, I should have videoed it before, but basically the choke will have been like that from your prior drive. When you hit the throttle, um, it snaps shut, okay? So you want full choke when you're cranking. That gets uh, the engine to suck as much gas as possible out of the carburetor. Now you say, well, that's completely choked off. How does the engine breathe? Well, don't worry about that, all right? Because as soon as it starts, there is this vacuum dash pot called the choke pull-off. Now I'm just gonna show you how it operates. I'm just gonna suck on the end of it. You can, you can, you can suck as well as your engine sucks, so. See that? Watch again. When, there's, when the engine starts and creates vacuum, that choke pull-off will do exactly what it says. It pulls the choke off so the engine's not completely off. So that's what the engine needs when it starts. It needs full choke while it's cranking to get as much gas as possible, and then it needs the choke pull-off hooked up and operating properly uh, in, in order to pull the choke off so that it can run. All right, so what you wanna do is adjust this linkage and literally you just bend the rod. It's a little old school, but that's what you do. You bend the rod until the choke, when it's cold, basically just snaps it shut. So you don't want a ton of tension on it, but you wanna make sure it fully closes. On the other hand, at the same time, again, these old mechanical systems, uh, I have it removed, but basically this is the, the idle cam. So I'm gonna show you in a minute uh, what that looks like when it's operational. But basically, see this highest point right here? That's the fast idle cam. So you want this to rotate into position so that this inner screw, this one right here, okay, the, 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 the screw closest to the carburetor is your fast idle screw. And you basically want it to hit just like that. So when the choke closes, it'll pull this up into position and you want it to hit right there. So how do you do that? Again, another rod to bend. This shorter rod, goes from the choke pull off down to that cam. And I had to, oops, I had to take it off uh, because I had to bend it. It was too short and it was pulling too high. So you gotta bend this rod until you get that relationship. The choke is closed and with the engine off, um, it basically puts that cam in exactly the right position to put it on the fast idle cam. All right, so I'll show it, I'll show it to you once it's reconnected. Okay. So now we're gonna show you how the uh, Slant 6 one barrel carbureted, uh, carburetor looks like when it's adjusted properly, all right? So if this is a cold engine, which it is, um, the choke's gonna be all the way open and actually probably be more open than that, but I've been messing with it. So when you, if you look at the, you can see the fast idle cam, right, is, is, is off because this is how you would have left it. When you hit the gas, okay, when you hit the, um, the throttle, see what happened? So a couple of things happen. The chokes snap shut. Again, I'll show you. So if it's like that, right? It snaps shut, all right? Also, it pulls up on that cam and sets the fast idle, all right? So that's that second screw right there. It is touching the cam in the right spot. So you have to mess around with that little linkage right there from the choke pull off down to the fast idle cam. And I had to file it a bit and do what you gotta do. Bend the wire, bend the, you know, bend the, the piece of wire, uh, file the opening if you have to, do whatever it takes to get it in this state. The choke is all the way closed, it snaps shut, it's on the fast idle cam, and you can tweak the fast idle obviously by moving the screw in and out, but that is what it's supposed to look like. And then triple check, uh, just hook up a vacuum hose, triple check that the choke pull off. So when the engine starts, see how that works? The choke pull off opens it up a little bit. And then once the engine is warm and the choke 
you know, as it warms up, the choke will relax. And then when you hit the throttle, right, it, you can see it moving away. There you go. So the fast idle cam moves out of the way and you go to the regular curb idle, which is that second screw, right? Which just hits the, the shaft. So that would be in your warmed up condition right there. So that's how you get it set properly. If you do that right, then it should start and run no problem. Okay, so one more thing before we put it back together. Uh, so we got the, the choke set properly. The choke and the fast idle cam and all of that is in correct relationship for it to start right. There's one more thing you need to make sure it is hooked up, and that is the, um, I think they call it the thermo vacuum system or something like that. But basically, when an engine is starting, it actually wants hot air. Uh, and actually, a carburetor kind of wants relatively hot air all the time. It's not like a fuel-injected engine. You need that fuel to vaporize well as it's going into the cylinder. In modern cars, you don't worry about that so much with fuel injection because it atomizes the fuel really well. Carburetors do not. You know, they run at a couple PSI. They don't vaporize the, the fuel very well. So to compensate for that, designers had to make sure that it got relatively hot air uh, or really warm air coming into the engine at all time, even when it's warmed up. So if you read the factory service manual, what they say is the system was designed to draw in about 95 to 105 degree air at all time. Okay, well, how do you do that? Because, you know, this is pre-computer control and it's not like there's anything uh, electrically that can, that can magically make that happen. So what they developed is um, this, I think, again, it's like an, a vacuum temperature controlled thing. If you notice in the air cleaner, there's this device on top that looks like a little hat. Okay, there's a vacuum diaphragm in there that opens a flap inside. You can kind of see that flap, okay? When vacuum is pulling on that, it pulls up on that flap, which causes it to draw air through this tube, which is connected to what's called the stovepipe. All right, so it's basically sucking air from around the exhaust. It's not the exhaust gas itself, okay? That's the role of the EGR. Uh, which actually in my case is, is blocked off, but uh, it's sucking hot air from around the exhaust. You want that hot air uh, when the engine is cold. So that, foul, that uh, vacuum pulls the damper open and pulls the hot air from around the exhaust. Uh, as the engine warms up, it doesn't need all that hot air and it needs to blend that with the, the, the outside air, right? Basically from the snorkel, okay? Or the at least cooler air not necessarily cool air, but cooler air. So that is connected to vacuum. But if it was just connected to straight vacuum, it would work all the time when it was when there was vacuum and it would go away when there wasn't vacuum, which you want under wide open throttle. You don't necessarily need all that hot air under wide open throttle. So under wide open throttle, when you have when you lose your vacuum, that damper valve closes. But they added one more thing in line because that system by itself wouldn't know anything about the temperature, right? Sorry about that bug. So there's this guy, all right? That is a temperature sensitive, basically interrupter. So on the bottom of the air cleaner, you can see there's two vacuum nipples, okay? One of them goes, again, to that, to that diaphragm to open it up, and the other one is connected to manifold vacuum, which in my case, I had to pull it off of uh, uh, the, the carburetor, um, the choke pull-off, right? In that spot on the carburetor, but it's, it's manifold vacuum, not ported vacuum, by the way. You want manifold vacuum, so I had to splice it in. It's just because it's a 76 engine and a who knows what carburetor. Anyway, all you need is, is manifold vacuum. That hose from manifold vacuum connects to one side of that and the other side goes there. And that, that vacuum switch is temperature activated and it's meant to, to be full on uh, when it's cold so that it draws hot air from around the exhaust, and then when it gets, I think it's right around 100 or 105 degrees, it's fully off so that the damper valve closes and you get fresh, cleaner air from the snorkel. And it blends in between. It's really kind of an ingenious device uh, before they had computer control. It's just all mechanical logic, but it works. You want that connected, okay? It has nothing to do with uh, emissions and all that stuff. Don't 
Don't disconnect it thinking that somehow you're you're gaining horsepower or, or whatever. You, you're not. You The engine, it, that is designed for a reason. The engine needs the right temperature of air. Again, 95 to 105 degrees is uh, is ideal per the Chrysler engineers back in the day, all right, to properly uh, atomize the fuel. So make sure that's hooked up. Use manifold vacuum to go to one side, and it doesn't matter, and the other side goes to the diaphragm, and then make sure that the pipe is connected to uh, the stovepipe so it can get hot air. The engine will start and run better. It will, I promise, it, it does. Make sure that's hooked up. If your carb, if the choke and um, fast idle cam and everything is set up right and that's set up, you should have no problem starting, it should have no problem start, starting and running properly. So I encourage you to do that and that's how you do it. And here it is hooked up. So again, you can see uh, the vacuum lines connected. The pipe, again, mine's a little bit janky. The flex pipes work better, but this is what I had. So you want it connected to that and it pulls hot air from around the exhaust and uh, blends it with the cool air through the temperature sensitive uh, vacuum switch and it works. Who needs computers, right? Ha.